Aloha, welcome back to the channel. I just got back from an amazing eight day safari in Ruaha National Park and this episode is all about the safari experience. It's part one. We're going to have probably two or three videos more to come from Ruaha. So uh, please like and subscribe to the channel and I hope you enjoy this video. The goal of the video is to share some of the photography but also to share what a safari experience is like in a mesmerizing landscape that is Ruaha National Park in southern Tanzania. All right, I hope you liked the episode. Uh, once again, please like and subscribe and take care. Aloha. in the bush lies a vast and remote wilderness, a mesmerizing landscape of baobab forest and sandy riverbeds that flow in the rains with names of Mdonya, Mugwasi, and Ruaha. 10% of the world's lions call this place home, along with leopards, elis, kudu, giraffe, hyena, and a host of smaller African wildlife like jackals, gannets, impala, baboon as well as a myriad collection of both resident and migratory birds. This is Ruaha National Park, Tanzania. About 700 kilometers south of Arusha and 500 kilometers inland from the rapid, rising, ever-expanding city of Dar es Salaam, Ruaha is a location that takes some effort to get to. I flew six hours from Kauai to LA, 10 hours LA to Amsterdam, nine hours Amsterdam to Kili, and an hour from Kili to Dar. I overnighted at the Hyatt in Dar, then it was back to the airport for a two-hour bush plane flight to Minsimbe Airstrip, Ruaha. <laughs> Samuel, my guide for the eight-day safari, and apprentice guide Christian, picked me up at Misimbe Airstrip, and from there it was about a 45-minute drive in an open safari land cruiser to Asili Africa's Jabali Ridge, a luxurious, permanent camp built discreetly between the boulders and Baobab. I received an incredibly warm welcome from the staff upon my arrival and was escorted to my suite with welcome juice in hand. As they say in Tanzania, Karibu. My suite was very large, comfortable, airy, bright, light. Shower was fantastic and it was incredibly comfortable. Ruaha in November was very, very hot, but it was nice to have this suite to come back to for siesta in between the morning and evening game drives. And here is the main area of Jabali Ridge, and here's my brother Lydia! Hello Lydia! Alright, this is the uh, pre-afternoon game drive, tea time, coffee, high tea, and we got a banana that fell. <laughs> Watch out, that's very slippery! <laughs> too windy, too windy! <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, we'll take a look out. So we, there were some Impala out here. We'll see what's out here now. Oh, Ellie's, Ellie's. Ellie's in the Jabali Ridge Garden. And believe it or not, uh, I actually felt three raindrops today. So maybe the rain's coming. Who knows, we've got a big old cloud up there. We'll see what happens with that. Beautiful Jabali Ridge of Sili, Africa. Happy to be here. Happy that my butler throws bananas on the ground. <laughs> Beautiful elephant out there. Beautiful baobab tree, taking some flowers. Probably in a couple of weeks, all this will be green once the short rains begin. Here in this area, we've had lunch a couple of times. Here's the bar. Good morning. We're here in Ruha National Park at Jabali Ridge. Sili Africa is Jabali Ridge. Five in the morning, having coffee in bed, the safari way, the Sili way. In Tanzania, the hospitality is above and beyond. It is absolutely world class, friendly, professional, um, and they they really care for the guests, and that's that's wonderful. So normally I take the coffee at five fifteen. This morning I was up a little early. I had some ideas on some settings to go over uh, on the camera on the R five, and uh, yeah, I was just unexpectedly up a little early. So I asked for the coffee to come at five, and of course, no problem. It comes at five, um, and I have cookies as well. So coffee and cookies in the morning can't be that, and you're on safari even better. So, this is the third full day. We're gonna go out around 5.45, 5.50. The plan for today is go look for some lion cubs. On day one, the first full day, we saw the Indoya pride. I think I pronounced that right the Indonia pride of four, I believe four adult female, two of them are mothers, and then we saw the Indonia male. Saw them in the morning, saw the male first, then we saw the three female, three of the four, and then my guide, Samuel, spotted a cub coming out of the den. And it's just a perfect lion king den. Rocks, rocky outcrop behind. And this little cub, still cloudy eyes. Maybe three to four weeks old. Spotted by Samuel, amazing guide here with the cilia at Jabali Ridge. Samuel's like... Lion cub, lion cub. And I'm like, where? He's like, 11 o'clock, 11 o'clock. I'm like, I don't see it, I don't see it, I don't see it. And then finally, we uh, we all saw it, Samuel and I. And slowly, two others emerged. So we sat and waited and waited. And then three others emerged. So a total of six cubs. We got word that they were hanging around. Well, so I'm going back to day one. We photographed them in the morning, left. 
came back in the evening, had absolutely an amazing, amazing session photographing these lions and the lion cubs. Relaxed, chill. Three of the cubs were out, all playing with mom and even approaching dad or the male. So really, really special. We got word uh, yesterday on the second full day that they had moved. And so today we are going looking for them. Yesterday, while we were en route to look for the lions, we heard that they hadn't been seen. But we did get word on radio of wild dog sighting. So we went out, followed that. We're on the way looking for wild dogs. My man Samuel is driving. He's going to find them for us. <laughs> we'll find for the wild dogs. That's right. Yeah. So my bags still haven't arrived, so we're doing this by hand, but we will have the selfie stick later. But uh, this is a pretty wild adventure going on right now, looking for the wild dogs. We have a fellow guide about 25 minutes away who's got eyes on two. So we're riding out there through the, I guess more of the river area heading out of the river area. Uh, and we got the baobabs, the wood banana the trees. Oh, look at this beautiful baobab. Right here in front of us, here. All right. Didn't see the pack that was found. They went into the bush, and the bush out here in Ruha is pretty thick. I'll show you today on safari, but um, so we, we heard word in another area of the park about 35, 40 minutes away that um, a guy had had eyes on two. So we went out there and fortunately we saw two wild dogs. Um, similar, kind of close area to where the lions might be. So that's today's agenda. We're going out there first looking for the lions. If we see something else, that's great. And then we'll also uh, look for the wild dogs as well. The wild dogs are incredibly beautiful. Uh, I was really, really surprised. It's the first time I've ever seen them. Uh, the two that we saw were absolutely beautiful. Big, big surprise. They're much, much bigger than what I expected. So 
I mean, they're really like uh, long, lean wolves um, and just absolutely beautiful painted coat, just gorgeous, white fluffy tail. Amazing. I mean, yeah, wild dogs uh, moving up on the list, that's for sure. Ruha is hot in November, so we forego a breakfast in camp and we get started before six or right at six and we get going take breakfast with us we'll eat in the bush i think the day we saw the lions we probably had breakfast like at 11 just because the lion sighting was just so tremendous yesterday was a little earlier probably around 8 or 8 30 um and then yeah no maybe nine i don't know after the wild dogs but uh anyway so because ruha is so hot really think it's important to get out early pretty much 6 to 12 on safari morning game drive stop somewhere along the way have brekkie come back lunch siesta and then head back out at four at least that's what we've been doing for um, the first two days and that's the plan for today as well all right good seeing you wish me luck hopefully we'll see uh wild dogs and lion cubs maybe a leopard as well so far they've been rather elusive and here we are on a game drive this is accelerated about two times the normal speed but this will give you an idea of what a typical morning game drive starts out like we leave camp around 5:50 or 6 a.m and we're driving through um, the ruha bush and you can see it's a dense dense bush and this is very different from somewhere like the serengeti and it's one of those aspects of Ruha that if this is your first trip to Tanzania, I probably wouldn't recommend it because you're not seeing the great number of wildlife all day long that you would see in the Serengeti. In Ruha, the bush is so dense that it's really difficult to spot the animals. And so in essentially what you're doing it seems as if you're driving to hot spots, uh, driving to water sources, driving to where uh, information has been passed on, where sightings or animals have been seen, uh, whether a kill from the day before and you go back and look at that spot, or you know you're you're driving along uh, to an o towards an open area uh, where water may be, whether it be uh, Magusi River or. Uh, the Ruha and looking for signs of animals but here in this dense dense bush it's really difficult to see so if this is your first safari I would actually recommend uh, something in the northern circuit the Serengeti Terengiri National Park in Gordo Gordo Crater and you'll be guaranteed to see well no guarantees of course but it's likely you'll see a lot more wildlife than you would in Ruaha. Now what makes Ruaha so special and significant is uh, the world-class wildlife encounters that you will likely have here, whether it be leopards or uh, lions or something that just uh, may surprise you as well. Um, and you can see here in this uh, safari vehicle, we have the open safari vehicle. And there's a lot of discussion, especially amongst photographers, of which is going to be the, the best vehicle to photograph from. And I really don't think it matters. The open vehicle uh, probably gives a little more immersive experience because you are mm, a little closer to the environment, as it were. Uh, but for each time that the open vehicle is more convenient to photograph out of, there will be opportunities where uh, the pop top is going to be actually better. Uh, anything that is high, so birds or leopards in a tree or a cheetah on a termite hill, uh, something on top of a riverbank. In those cases, the uh, open vehicle um, is not going to be as good as that pop top. The other thing to consider, uh, if it were to rain, um, the pop top is going to be a lot more convenient. And most of the guides really want the pop top closed vehicle versus the open vehicle uh, because of dust and weather and rain um, and yeah, cold, whatnot. 
So um, yeah, my advice on the the vehicle, just don't don't worry about it. The pop top is just as good as the open vehicle. Again, if you want that complete immersive experience, then the open vehicle could be a little better. But for photography, I honestly don't think it matters. Here we are. Samuel, guide extraordinaire, brought us on a lion in a Cape Buffalo kill. First thing in the morning, watch the sunrise sit and uh, sit with a lion with his kill. He's right in front of us. We have a jackal at 12 o'clock, sunrise behind us at three. Another male lion is in the vicinity, very nearby, drinking from the water. Hopefully we'll uh, see these two eat or move the carcass. Samuel found these two lions pretty much in the same area here in the dried riverbed yesterday, two adult males. Got good light shining right onto them. And we'll see what happens. direction. Check it out. It's time for breakfast. Samuel, breakfast time. Yes, breakfast time now. How was the leopard? Leopard was very great. Yes. We said the moya so, so relaxed. Yes. Enjoyed it. Big male. Very big male. Healthy. So super. Yes. Great. So we're going to have breakfast and then uh, we'll go back and see him. He's hiding under a bush. So we'll uh, head back over there. But first, take some, uh, some breakfast. Probably. Omelet sandwich, maybe? Vegetable omelet sandwich? Some egg, cheese, spinach? Oh, today we have vegetable wrap, according to Samuel. So, looking forward to that. But look at this beautiful area here in Ruaha National Park. Samuel, which river is this? This is the Mogusa River. It is dry now, of course. How many more weeks until it's flowing again? Depends on the rain. And where is our picnic? It is under this a gigantic tree. Tamarind's tree. All right. Normally we have breakfast under a baobab tree, but oh, well we have baobab tree right behind us. <laughs> we'll check out the baobab tree. You hear the guinea fowl. Look at a beautiful tree. All right, that is all for Deep in the Bush, Ruaha Safari, part one. Look forward to part two coming up. We will have leopards. We'll have the evening sighting with Moyo, the beautiful male leopard, and lions defending their kill, a couple of hyena. Maybe we'll throw in a few more birds and Lots of beautiful scenery and amazing animals from Ruaha National Park coming up soon in Deep in the Bush Part 2. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And Karibu! Asante sana!